in Nepal, 85 percent are people are still Hindu. Eight to nine percent Buddhist. There are 3,942 religious still. There is no church. So many people are lost. Why are so many places are there is no church? Sakura <laughs> Plus, more mirror or some of the more jungle magoer, Rukuru Kachu. You area one hundred by the one got a lot of something. That's a that's More than more than ten thousand people I toss. Dar is just a little country farm town. No traffic lights, just a, a, a good place to uh, raise a family, a good old American fashion way. My dad was a pastor all my life. You know, I'd been living this life of American dream Christianity. I didn't know that there was more, but you don't know what you don't know until you know. This is the place where we lived when uh, I was probably at my lowest point in my life. A time living in this house and being all alone, not knowing how I was going to pay the bills, struggling with work, struggling with family. The enemy, you know, got a foothold and just tried to destroy our family. Every single day was a struggle. I had a career that I was, it really meant the world to me. I was focused more on my reputation, my position, recognition as a coach. Head coach Steve Patterson's team is now making his first ever state tournament game of reality. How did other people look at me? That, that meant a lot to me. I don't know what Coach Patterson told him in that time out, but it worked. I'm just talking about not going all in. I was not all in. All these other things that I was doing meant nothing as far as eternity was concerned. At that point in my life, something had to change. And I literally cried out to him. I mean, I, I cried out to him and he, he was there. He never left me. He just had to teach me some lessons. It was the defining moment of, of God putting me in the right direction for what he had for me for the rest of my life. If we truly ground the Great Commission in the Scriptures, then, you know, it's, it's Matthew chapter 28, it's Mark chapter 16, 
It's preach the gospel to all creation. It's make disciples of all nations. And then it's Acts chapter one, do it everywhere from Jerusalem to the other most parts of the earth. And if we combine that, then certainly it has to be seen as the role of every believer because every believer lives somewhere, has someone to proclaim to and has disciples to make. Growing up in the church all my life, I, I heard the Great Commission. I read the Great Commission. But until the Holy Spirit just began to illuminate me to exactly what Jesus was talking about, I go back and say, how, how did I miss that? When the Lord started changing my life back in 2000, you know, I began to seek. And I was doing a lot of good things. You know, I was a part of a lot of good things in the, in the church. <laughs> Y'all come and eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, come on. I know he wants his pizza hot. I know. <laughs> there he is. Hey, did you get some pizza? I already eat. Oh, well, you got to try some dessert. Hey, I brought my disc. I was given an opportunity to go on, on a, a mission trip. I asked my oldest brother, Harold, why don't you go on a mission trip with me? Sit down and eat, man. I'm good. You sit down and eat. Good. The pizza's going to get cold. You not eating? I ate before I came here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, you have to eat twice. <laughs> and he said something to me before we left on the trip that I will never forget. He said, my goal on this mission trip is to find one single person. And I, I looked at him. I said, Harold, what are you talking about? We're going to preach the gospel to tens of thousands of people. And you're talking about one person. At some point, the light came on. In what we call the Great Commission, Jesus says, Go ye therefore, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. In the past, the church has confused this and, and come in with a heavy hand, but flesh and blood cannot reveal these things to you. It takes the Spirit. So how does the Spirit reveal himself? He has decided largely to work through his people. I still had not understood fully the significance of one person. Because, I, you know, when I first started thinking about disciple making, the question came to me, how can one person make a difference? Love you, man. How's your week been? But Lord, I, I pray that uh, every single person that's a part of this group, Lord, understands their significance. That if we're going to reach the nations, He needs every one of us. Mm -hmm. Lord, You need every one of us. Or, I, I guess I shouldn't say You need us, You chose us. And I guess the biggest thing, Lord, is multiply us. Multiply this group like crazy all over the earth. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I do not want to take away from what we do every Sunday night in fellowship. Eat, thank you. Eating the meal together. Uh, that is disciple making. That, that don't, don't ever take it the wrong way that like tonight, let's, let's get started right now. I think the apostles walked away from that conversation with the Lord for years to come, said, Holy Spirit, help her, help me. What does it mean to make disciples? How do I teach somebody to obey everything that Jesus commanded me? I think the Holy Spirit probably leaned in and whispered and said, how did Jesus teach you? They'd go, well, I met this guy who was fascinating and I, I lived with him for like three years and I saw everything that he did and I got offended or I challenged him. I got into the scriptures and I, I looked at the life of Jesus and his ministry. I mean, here we have God himself in the flesh and instead of spending his time with tens of thousands of people, he chose 12 men. Wait, why would he spend most of his time with 12 men? We brought 21, 21 bus loads Good night. Of, of people. Yep. yep. Shut down the whole school system. Mm hmm And uh, we won that game, got beaten in the semifinals at the buzzer. Yeah, the girl missed a layup. No, no, you're thinking about it. You're thinking about Madison. This okay. is Gibson County. Okay. Jesus could see the masses through a man. Mm hmm The fact that 
you can take a small group of people and if that small group of people go out and invest in a few more people that before long, now you've doubled. And then, you know, you look down the road and it doubles again and it goes back to what he said in Matthew 9. He didn't say pray that the Lord of the harvest would bring people in. He said pray that he will send laborers out. And that was the difference to me is when the Holy Spirit started showing me, you got to go where the people are, you got to teach and train them, and then they've got to go out and reach their people. John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I choose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit. That fruit will last. The one I met, one man of God, Amen. Steve Patterson, he came from the United States. Harold and I went to Nepal a few years ago. He came to Nepal and he taught me the being a disciple, source planting, how we can do that. By the time we left, we could tell the Holy Spirit had cast the vision to him. So I just committed myself to put in practice what God has called to me. Since we've come back to the States and we stay in contact with him almost daily, the numbers of people that have been reached with the gospel, the numbers of people that have been taught and trained in disciple making, I can't even share with you all the numbers. Unreached people groups that have been reached now because Pastor Nadi caught the vision of disciple making and now it's going from village to village to village in Nepal, reaching people and then teaching and training them in disciple making. We did that one conference in the city and then a few hours out in the mountains. Six down, hours. Six down hours. In the valley <laughs> by a river that flowed by. And one pastor had walked. How many was it like? Yeah, it was like a 12 hours. 12 hour walk. Over the mountains. Yeah, over the mountains and stayed. And then after the conference, went back home. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time I heard from Pastor Nadi that, he, that, that that pastor was making disciples mm -hmm. on the other side of the mountain. I Bible we we cannot wait. We cannot spend our time to others unnecessary things.
God has given us the mission mandate. If we could not reach out them, if we are could not able to share them, who will go there? So we are the people, the great responsibility to take care. That's our urgency. That's our job. That's our the first priority. That is our main task. He will jump on his motorcycle and, and ride for hours and then get to a place that his motorcycle can't go and then he'll walk for another X number of hours just to get to one little village. They are relentless in doing this. I mean, nothing, nothing stops them. Paul wrote to the Romans and said, you know, there are people out there that don't know. Well, how are they going to know unless someone sends them? He knew he had to invest in, in people. And that's what he did. He invested in, in Luke and Timothy and all these other people. प्राप्त गरे as you are growing and maturing in the word and as the Holy Spirit leads you, you, you find people that you invest in that are faithful people, and those people are going to do the very same thing. Vision is, is seeing that one person can reach millions of people with the gospel through investing in other people, pouring into other people. From my networks till today, I have a record for that uh, more than 600 house search. This is since, uh, since eight years, so within eight years. You know, speaking as an American, I think we have confused and conflated disciple making with mentoring in the church and so once somebody's come to faith once somebody's been baptized then we hand them a stack of books or we like meet them on a Tuesday afternoon and ask them how their heart is doing all of those things are valid but that's not making a disciple that's mentoring somebody which we should be doing that's body life we, we must do that but if we are not getting out of our coffee houses and don't break outside of these bubbles of people we do life with because they think and look and act like us, we're never 
going to bear faithful witness of the gospel of the kingdom to people who are perishing because they have not yet heard? How are they going to hear if somebody doesn't rock up and preach it to them verbally with their words? I cannot stop. I cannot sleep. I cannot feel I'm free because God has given me tax, agenda, mission, agenda, which I have to carry. That's my heart. That's my passion. Taki Moili Abu, you you can go to Ponza. Hala Panama Zanu Ponazama. Taki Mogor, Sutter Bosha no one raiser. Taki Moili Porbu, a total camp, then a corner more, Malay, then a portable and some in Bagosa. So we have no any excuse. No excuse. We have to make disciples. It's not the rock stars, it's not a personality type, it's not a few super special giftings. It is simple obedience that changes history. Is there finally going to be some great preacher that reaches everybody or no? It's going to be every believer rising up going, this is my privilege, this is my responsibility, and I can reach a few. It's not going to be really talented people. It's going to be a whole bunch of nameless, faceless, somewhat feeling very ordinary uh, B-teamers, you know? They didn't even make varsity. But that's all that God's looking for is a yes. A yes to reach the few that He might call us to. A yes to love the person in front of us. And if we would all do that, then not only would we see a massive wave and a move of God in America, but we would see it around the nations of the earth. Why am I here? Yeah. I'm here to spend time with some of my uh, my disciples and some of their disciples. So this is like spending time with uh, spiritual children and grandchildren. I, I have a strange feeling that uh, this could be a bad experience for me uh, because I, I don't like losing. And I, I don't think I can hold up to these young guys. But you know what? Lord, Lord help me. <laughs> Lord help me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. If you were to go and ask a dozen people to define discipleship, you might get a dozen different answers. But to me, it's, it's, it's living life with the people that you're teaching and training. There you go. It's supposed to turn back. Come on, come on, baby. In Scripture, there were a lot of people that followed Jesus at, at one point or another. But you won't see Jesus camping with them, uh, eating with them. <laughs> That's basically what we're doing here is we're just we're just growing closer together today, you know, and it, it goes way past one meeting for 45 minutes, you know, drinking coffee for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. To say that it's going to be easy, I would be lying. Taking the time to invest in other people when you could be doing other things for yourself. There's a line that has to be drawn in your own life. No matter what job you're doing, no matter how many hours in the day you're working, that 
at the end of the day, what, what are you doing to invest in other people? I'll use Kat, who was an average, good Christian girl. She came to discipleship one night, and obviously the Holy Spirit spoke to her. I remember sitting there, and Coach, he was just going on and on and on about unreached people groups. And I was just like, I have no idea what he's talking about. I just remember being like scared to look at him in the eyes. I was just taking as many notes as possible, writing down everything that he said, just because I wanted to know. I felt like there was more, and I knew that he had it. At first, I was insecure. I was like, I'm not qualified or equipped to teach anybody anything. I like wrestled in my heart, lies from the enemy, you're not equipped, you're not capable. And then just the simplicity of disciple making, Jesus so clearly speaking to me, this is of me, this is what I planned for you. You don't have to be somebody. Look at my 12 guys, they were nobodies. They were fishermen and tax collectors, lowest of the low. Feeling God's heart in this is that every single person would feel the hands of Jesus on their shoulders, looking them in the eye going, you can make a difference. And if every believer would live with that sense of calling and that sense of uh, qualification, then that's really actually what would lead the Great Commission to horizons it's never touched before. And now you fast forward a few years, now Kat is teaching and training middle school kids, high school kids, college students, some of her disciples are already starting new groups. This, this is the picture of multiplication. Me spending time with Kat, investing my life into her. She turns around and invests her life in some other young people. But show your love to me by being obedient to what I've commanded you. No matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what your career is, no matter what your background is, if you're a believer in Jesus, this is expected. And this is required to see fruit and to see the nations be reached with the gospel is through this strategy, this simple strategy of investing in people that are gonna invest in other people. We are going to interceding prayer for the next two, three villages. Where is the no churches? But we have a vision. We have a Passion to reach over there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is the Chisapani village. But they still, uh, these are the places, the unreached places. One day, God will be able to help us to be uh, able to find out the man of peace somewhere. First Timothy 2, 3, 4, like uh, God's heart is no one be lost. No one be lost. He wants to see every tribe, every group, every tongues. People have to, to come to know the, the truth about Jesus. That's the desire of our Father. So being a disciple, we have to understanding the Father's heart so that we can come up with the, that compassion to pray for the people. The one soul is very precious for Jesus Christ and He loves every single person. He loves and He wants to save them. The nations were always part of God's original design. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue, it's always been in His heart. The, the start of Matthew 22, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a father preparing a wedding for his son. The intention of God that's been present from the very beginning, from before let there be light, and even in the Abrahamic covenant, as, as the Lord wrote the terms of the everlasting covenant, he said, Abraham, I'm gonna give you seed, land, and blessing. All nations of the earth will be blessed through you, all nations. And when the marriage of the lamb comes, there's a wedding feast with all nations. And Revelation 7 tells us that literally every nation is represented. This is why Jesus is committed to the gospel of the kingdom being borne witness to, to every tribe, tongue, and people group, every nation.
सोलह हजार यो संसार भरी को तर प्रभु को वचन ने यौना के दर्शन देखे हर एक जाति हर एक भाषा बोलने हर एक संस्कृति फरक तर ते सब परमेश्वर चिन्हुन यो पिता को इच्छा यो परमेश्वर को इच्छा of course, we know we have this massive need with the unreached, over 7,000 unreached people groups, totaling about 3.2 billion people. And unreached being defined as less than 2% Christian and lacking the sufficient resources or manpower to grow on their own. When I have met groups of people and their response is, I don't know Jesus, who is Jesus? Once I heard about that, it really breaks my heart. It's so different for someone who had access and just went like, I don't, I don't want it, you know, or like saw it around them and went, it's not for me. That's different than never having heard the name of Jesus one time. It's estimated that 2.5 billion of the, of the unreached have never heard the name of Jesus. They don't even know he came once, much less that he's coming again. I just uh, arrived in Chispani village. This is the, our target village. Till today, here is not yet we are able to find a man of peace. Hopefully, one day we'll be find a man of peace here, and then we'll start one church planning over here. Here, uh, till today, uh, no one people heard the message or of the God, and no one accepted Christ. Fully unreached group of the people lives here. Nearly four or five thousand people live over their village, but still they, they don't know about who is Jesus. No one. No one is out. There is no church. Means there is zero. There is a zero. And uh, uh, one day God will definitely show us and then uh, we'll be able to find out the man of peace here. That's our hope. That's our prayer. It's the, it's the privilege, it's the opportunity, it's the obligation of every believer. He's the father who waits for the prodigal. He's the shepherd who leaves the 99. He's the lady who flips over her furniture for the one coin. If he's looking at the earth, he loves every human equally, but he thinks differently about the places that have never heard his name before. And we have to think differently, even if we're not called to live there. Reaching the nations was never a concept to me. That was for missionaries. Uh, that, that was what I was brought up in. He began to show me, no, no, no. This is not a missionary thing. This is for every single believer. You do this so we can reach the nations. The Lord has given me an opportunity to share with the entire student body the plan of Jesus to get the gospel to the ends of the earth. Oh, man. It is, it is the perfect message for them at their age to learn that Jesus has chosen them to live in them and to go uh, and make disciples. You're talking to teenagers and think about how many people they can reach in their lifetime. As I was driving over this morning, I, I was thinking, as I stand up there looking across the, this crowd to see how many nations are represented in this crowd today. So that's what I'll see when I'm standing up there. I'll see, I'll see nations. I mean, I think about myself. I was, I grew up in the church. I didn't know. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that there were people in the world that Jesus was planning on me reaching with the gospel, either by sending me or sending some of my disciples. I, I had no concept. I think the Holy Spirit let some people know today that, it, that their Christianity is no longer just about them being saved. It's about Jesus living in them to get the message to the rest of the world. Because these kids hear it every day. Every day. Every day. But there's kids out there who never heard it one single time. And that's the Father's heart breaks. And he wants these kids to go, or these kids to be taught and trained to teach others that will go. <coughs> I thought everybody knew about Jesus. Because I, I mean, I grew up in the Bible Belt. And that, I, that was one of my points was, I'm thinking, how come everyone doesn't have access to the gospel like I do? 
and, and they got to just even wrap your head and your heart around that for a moment. What's it like to go to bed every night without hope and without even an avenue to hope? You know, how many people do we know that their salvation story is, I was broken, I was desperate, you know, I crashed and I finally cried out to God, right? How many people do we know that's their story? Well, the only reason that's their story is because they, they knew about God. They knew about Jesus. They either grew up around it, it was in their street street corner, the church down there, it was the time they read the Bible, it was the little Christian VBS thing they went to as a kid. But what's it like to go to bed at night and not even know there is someone to cry out to? There's no thought in your mind that I could go beyond the idols, the gods around me to someone who could actually help deliver, save, set free, redeem. Baramu is uh, one of tribes, UBG, on this group the people. On this group people means totally they don't know. They are living under the darknesses. One my Timothy Resam, he had to reach out this Baramu group of the people. Resam what? Hamle <laughs> अन्य हमले तो हैं पहले वहाँ को शीर्मती आऊँ ना बात ही यहाँ शीर्मती आगो पासी फिर वहाँ बोलों ना बो अन्य पाऊँ यहाँ पहाड़ और बारम मुंग गई हो घरा हमले सु समझार और सुनोनी प्रार्थना कर दिनी वहाँ वो देर ही तो दूसरा हाथ में ले काम करे को रहता अन्य पासी घरा they're not only reaching the unreached, but their goal is that that person who used to be unreached and now is reached becomes a missionary. So people aren't just an object to be reached. People are sons and daughters of the living God that would also have the privilege of obeying the Great Commission themselves. Now, our job is we have to train him, make him as a mature radical disciple. He can easily reach out his own people. Language are similar. Culturally <laughs> 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 On this group of the people, but today we can say God has already reached out these groups of people. In future, they can make it this 10,000. <laughs> There will be a year, there will be a month, there will be a week, there will be a day, there will be an hour, and there will actually be a minute where the last language group on earth acknowledges that Jesus is Lord. It's right in front of us. He's the God of Genesis 50:20 to 
flip everything for his good, or Romans 8, 28, to use everything for the glory of God. And it is the glory of God that he would be worshiped in every language. It's in Habakkuk, he says that the glory of the knowledge of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. This was always meant to go global. It was always meant to go from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth and back again. And in the ages to come, he will be worshiped in literally every language that any man or woman has spoken since Babel because it is right and appropriate. He deserves that kind of glory. That's Jesus' inheritance and it is our privilege to partner with him in that. That might mean that you go out into your neighborhood and make friends with somebody that is different than you. It might mean that you actually go to a different nation and you bear witness to the beauty and wonder and draw people into fascination with Jesus. Oh, for Daniel. Thank you for Daniel, Lord. Thank you for Lauren, David, Rob. Thank you for, for John Robertson. Lord, wherever he is, Jacob, Adam, Joe, Abby, Max, Dawson, for Casey, Alexa, thank you so much for Alexa. I think his ultimate goal is to live with all of us forever. You know, killing your own son pretty much says to the world, I want all of you. For them to know you better, for them to grow and to mature in your word, and for them to go out and teach others. And I thank you, Lord, that you're doing that in their hearts. The thing that Jesus spoke of the most when he was here was about the kingdom of God that's coming. Jesus was always looking forward. And of course, we know that the Father, even going back to Genesis, was always looking to the end picture. The end picture is this, all peoples, all nations being with the Father being with the Son, being with the Holy Spirit forever and ever in a new creation. This is the good news of the kingdom. Jerusalem is the Lord's footstool. It is the city of the great king. This is where heaven and earth will knit together forever. And then there's no more death, there's no more sorrow, there's no more sickness, there's no more pain, there's no more grief. Like that is paradise, that is Eden. And that is his ultimate goal, is, is getting all of mankind from the garden where there was sin to the new garden in a perfect relationship with him. This is the hope that we disciple people into. This is what the writer of Hebrews called the sure and steadfast anchor for our souls. The sure and steadfast anchor for our soul is that God is going to make do on all of his promises and come back. And that's what we're drawn into. That's the everlasting life. We will be with Jesus on this earth without war, without sickness, without death, without sorrow. That's the good news. That's what we get to pull people into. Now, I want the table, when we sit down and eat dinner in the resurrected world, if you will, to be as crowded as possible. Don't you want that table to be as crowded as possible? Go ye therefore. When he comes back to restore everything and says, okay, come on into my kingdom, and knowing that I play a part in helping people get there that maybe don't even know the gospel. But at some point, if I continue to do this, they're going to find out. They're going to hear the gospel. And the Holy Spirit's going to draw them to Jesus. You know, I, I, I didn't go to a Bible college. I didn't go to a seminary. I'm a high school math teacher. I'm a basketball coach. I'm a good old country boy. You know, on paper, I have no credentials. How are you? Jameson. Yes, I'm fine. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor Nadi, and thank you to all the people in Nepal. I was never, you know, the sharpest tool in the shed. I just don't see anyone look at me with so many more qualified people and say, yeah, I'll choose Patterson. No, I would be, the, I would be that person that would be the last pick. That's the way I see it. Sing with joy for Jacob, the chief of the nation. Adonai, who has saved your people. Oh.
You know, you, you would think that, that the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth would, would choose certain people with certain skills, but that's the beauty of disciple making. It's, it's not what we bring to the table. If you spend your life on things that do not matter, you will enter eternity with empty hands and empty pockets, and probably no small degree of regret. The Lord will wipe away tears from your eyes, but don't you want to give to the Lord something that will last? You have the opportunity to give Him gold that is refined by fire and becomes even more beautiful. This is the only age in redemptive history when the Lord will breathe on weakness. This is the age when he breathes on awkward, weak, fumbling people trying to do their best and figure it out. And the Lord is honored by that and he loves that and he'll breathe on that and he'll beautify it when he comes. But if you don't build, what are you giving your life to? That's not easy, but it's worth it. Ready. All right. Now do it. Join I'm honored. I'm honored, man. This is this is like a dream come true. If, if he is my Lord, then I want to be obedient to him and doing exactly what he told me to do. What I envision, and as I was thinking about it today, is I can see you four going through the rest of your life and having disciples, and you will literally say, "I'm going to baptize you." I mean, that's, I don't want this to end with you just saying, well, I was baptized. No, no. I'm being obedient. I'm going to teach other people the rest of my life about disciple making. And part of, part of disciple making is baptizing people. You don't have to be a minister. Tonight you're, you're looking at a high school math teacher that is baptizing you. But it also will say to them, this is, this is for all believers. Everyone in our group should be baptizing the rest of their life. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what you're doing, your ultimate goal has to be moving toward how can I reach the nations with the gospel where I am. Even if we know that our mission field in the Great Commission is our home state, home city, home nation, we still have a responsibility to the 3.2 billion. Pray, pray fervently, get gritty. Get on your knees, like find tears for the lost, find tears for the unreached, like grab a hold of a few nations and go, I'm next decade, I'm owning these in prayer. It's an honor to baptize you because you have confessed Jesus as Lord. The numbers, they, they can just be so big and overwhelming that they feel more like numbers than reality. So I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son. Those 3.2 billion, those are 3.2 billion ones. And we've got to think about that. Think about the one, stopping for the one, loving the one, reaching the one. Lord, we just, uh, we give you honor and glory for this. And we just pray that there will be more disciples made through this group of people right here. With this number of people that we have here tonight, we're not only going to change this area, we can change our country and we can change the world because that's what you do. You take people that are obedient to you and say, I will live my life through you in order to reach the nations with the gospel. And we're claiming that tonight, Lord, that, that in our lifetime, in the lifetime of these young people, that all nations will be reached with the gospel and the earth will be prepared for your second coming, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. We'll head back in.
scattered his people is bringing them back guarding them like a shepherd guards his flock sing with joy for Jacob the chief of the nation Adonai Yeah, for those that are, your heart is moved, like you're, you're, you're reeling in a sense, like, man, God, I think, I think this could be you, and I feel compelled, like, I feel like this might be something I'm called to, I would just highly encourage you to not ignore that seed of faith, and it might feel small, it might feel really little, it might feel like in a few more moments it'd be easy to kind of brush it off and go, out oh, was just a little bit of emotion, but I would say do not ignore the seed of faith that God has placed in your heart. Do not ignore that emotion of the Holy Spirit at work in your heart. And the sooner you can act on that seed, the sooner you can take a risk based on that seed, it's as simple as kayak.com, get a ticket, go somewhere, <laughs> connect your heart to the unreached, and see what God might do. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret taking a risk and actually stepping forward and going. Go for three months, go for a month, go do a discipleship training school, go with a different organization, but you will never regret the rest of your life that you have allowed that seed to turn into real action. And it will inform you from there, from that point of action, as to what God is saying to you after that and, and what the future could look like.